When His Excellency Dr. Julius Madabio took office in 2018, the First Lady of the Republic of Sierra Leone brought the Hands of Our Girls campaign initiative. The initiative is a subset in the Human Capital Development Agenda and it is headed by the First Lady, Dr. Fatima Madabio. It was officially launched in December 2018 and witnessed by many other African First Ladies in the sub-region. The campaign is specifically intended to bring awareness, influence policy, and support women and girls. When we were doing survey um, regarding uh, the Sexual Amendment Act and um, the laws that are within Sierra Leone to ensure that uh, children or women are safe, and then when we ask community people that um, what are the recent laws that have been, you know, implemented or have that have been passed by parliament to ensure that uh, survivors of sexual and gender based violence or girls are supported and then they will point out that hands of our girls that shows that there is, has been awareness at community level about hands of our girls project and there has been a lot of knowledge with regards to sexual and gender based violence so far as that the hands of our girls campaign is concerned is that it has been a success it has been a huge success um, Part of it involves the distribution of sanitary parts to girls, etc. All that has gone well. What I've seen through the Hands of Our Girls campaign is that the, the campaign has really opened up a very important space for dialogue. I see young girls, I see boys talking about these issues. Um, and I've also seen that the conversations that the campaign has started have moved beyond Syria. This attracted many Sierra Leoneans and organizations, including the international NGOs, civil society organizations, MDAs, religious leaders, paramount chiefs, and tribal leaders. Hands off our girls with the paramount chief. Now this district here with the support of 100%. What you don't learn in education, it don't go further. It they really help the family for men to go to So when friends say they don't come to my embassy today, where the women that own my embassy will happen? Well, we know as stakeholders, um, um, we self get a very large following. And we meet in them, we get for continue this same uh, move for educate them, make them see the reason why we for allow every sector of mortal man in this country for able land book. Being the caring mother seeking the interest of her children, the first lady was able to attract support from the president to design and launch the Free Sanitary Pad Project, which is born out of the desire to keep girls in school to benefit fully from the free quality education. The Free Sanity Pad initiative has helped keep girls in school while on their menstrual cycle and promotes proper hygiene. Her advocacy has had considerable success in improving the quality of life for young girls and women in Sierra Leone. This can last a girl a whole year. One of this, in this part, you have 120 pieces. These girls who go to school are found themselves nowhere to be able to take care or manage their menstruation at school. So, um, her providing these sanitary pads for us and also promising to continuously produce it for us as long as she's First Lady is major. The distribution of sanitary pads to girls, etc. All that has gone well. And I think the girls, the young girls, they are in a better position than they were before 2018. And it continues to improve. A, a first lady that, had a, that has the heart of gold told it fit that my children, my girls are suffering. They are not going to school because of their menstruation. And she provided that. For the whole year, somebody gives you a sanitary pad. That is unheard of because we know the cost. And it's not just the cost, it's the quality. 
It's a top-notch sanitary pad. A pad that you'll be, you'll be proud to, to just display it in your home. That's what she did. She didn't just say, you know, I'll give my children anything. No. She went her way to make sure that the sanitary pads, they are durable. They will serve them for a whole year. There will be no stress on the kids, no stress on the parents. It's something that, seriously, I keep saying, we will not even say thank to you. But God Almighty will thank you and will reward you greatly. A conviction for child rape has been updated to life imprisonment from a two-year maximum sentence. A fast-track special court for rape cases was launched in 2020, which turned cases around within a week compared to a previous two-year wait. And um, it was one of the reasons why, in fact, we in the judiciary thought that we should be involved in the area of um, prosecuting offenders. At that same time, 2019, I looked at the, 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 the cases that were coming up. When I looked at the, the callover list, and there were so many sexual uh, uh, um, 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 cases, sexual offenses cases. So it, it led us to wanting to bring an end to this thing. And as a result of that, that led to the setting up of the, the Sexual Offenses Model Court. We are here to officially launch the Sexual Offenses Model Court, which we've been yearning for the last, since we launched Hands of a Girl. And now declare the Sexual Offenses Model Court. She further committed that she is going to build a center of excellence that will um, provide care for victims of rape or sexual violence. The campaign has sponsored and facilitated the training of 43 medical doctors to treat rape cases construction of a pediatric hospital with 100 beds at the 34 Military Hospital. So prior to now, I know she has been quite supportive of the military. At the end of every year, she will come and, you know, support pregnant women and children up to when we had the COVID outbreak. And um, she committed that she is going to establish a 100 bed pediatric unit for us. That is, I will say 80 to 90% complete now. She further committed that she is going to build a center of excellence that will um, provide care for victims of rape or sexual violence. And that is also advancing quite well. She 
committed to develop a good administrative structure that is going to support the services that she is trying to loop in to the 34 military hospital and i tell you that structure is over 90 percent complete for sure we have also worked with her through her leadership and support in fact just outside this office you will see an almost completed structure for the training of nurses and hopefully midwives and that is going to serve as the nucleus for expansion of medical training within the military i want to thank the first lady for that wonderful initiative in ensuring that she supports the um, development of this hospital as a tertiary health facility within the country doesn't matter the race, the color, the tribe, it's going to cater for everyone. As long as you are sick, you come here, you are going to have the best medical facility here. And it's all thanks to the initiative of the First Lady for bringing this thing up. Because back in the days, we don't think about this. We only think about food, good roads, and all, all other things. But now we have medical assistance coming into our country. So it's all thanks to her.